Probably the most budget Ford Stroker put together with a production block, factory Ford 302 pistons, and the original Windsor rods that came out of this block. Matched up with a cast steel crank that we bought off Summit Racing, and you got yourself a budget junkyard powerhouse. So if you're new to the channel and are curious to see what we got going on here, then stick around. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be wrenching on our 387 stroker motor. If you're not really sure what that is or how we got to this point as it is, consider checking out this playlist as we've had a number of videos leading up creating this budget stroker block. For those of you who's just new to the channel, these are factory Ford 302 TRW pistons from a Fox body 302 motor. We had the block machine decked, cleaned, and clearanced. We used the original Windsor rods that were actually out of this block, put a new timing chain on it, put a shelf camshaft from Anderson. So we took those parts, bought a cast steel 3.85 stroke crankshaft, which some of you guys that are familiar with Ford strokers, that's a 393 crankshaft normally purchased with a kit. But instead we decided to put a, together something inexpensive and budget, which basically gives you a 387 stroker because it's still a stock bore. During the machining process, we had a really good bore. We just ball honed the bore and we decided to build with some of the extra parts that we had laying around in the shop, which included a Anderson B31 cam, an extra balancer that we had laying around, just some parts that we had that weren't doing anything. So now we're gonna make them useful. Again, guys, check out the playlist and you will bring you up to speed on where we're at right now. In today's video, we're gonna be going over putting the oil pump in, oil pan on that we had modified, timing chain cover, and kind of buttoning up the bottom end of this block. And when we get towards the end of the video, we're gonna pop these aluminum cylinder heads on that we got from a buddy of ours that we just had rebuilt at the machine shop, check the fitment, as we seem to think that we may not have to cut pistons. And what I mean by that is piston the valve. This video is gonna lead into the next video where we're gonna take these cylinder heads back over to the machine shop and we're actually gonna show you here on the channel piston the valve clearance with this motor. As this motor is pretty much at zero deck, we definitely wanna check that out before we actually try to get it fired up. So without further ado, let's get wrenching back on the block and get this thing buttoned up and get it ready to go back to the machine shop. All right, first things first is we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, lifters, we're gonna we have some good used lifters that we had used over the years. We put this motor together with pretty much extra parts that we had. Again, this lifter retainer is actually from a 302, so they actually fit the same on a 351, as you can see here. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten some of these parts up real quick. We managed to get uh, the, the timing chain cover on. We put a new seal on while we were at it. Uh, had some timing chain, original factory, like bolts or whatever, put a new gasket sealer on. Nothing like using the right stuff. That stuff seals up engines pretty good. But uh, So the next thing we're gonna install here is the balancer. Um, I, I wanted to stop here real quick and show you what we did. One of the biggest problems that we had with the 387 stroker was getting the actual assembly like balanced. One of the videos that we had here on our playlist, as you can see here, is us actually at the machine shop balancing the, um, the 387 stroker. We did have some issues 
you know, we needed to balance where there was no counterweight section. So we had to actually take it out of the balancer. So that ended up proving to be quite the feat, but we ended up getting it balanced without much effort. But I did want to stop and talk about the balancer real quick, because that was one of the major concerns with the, the engine when we were building it. And as we finish the bottom of the motor, I'll point out a couple other things that we had to deal with, and then we'll continue building this. So one thing I did want to mention is, you know, the oil pump drive shaft has a little bit of play in it. You can see right here, but that little clip came top here to keep it from falling out, removing the distributor. It's kind of nice. I gave it just a little bit of extra play. That way it didn't fall out. The pickup tube that we apparently ran with this road race pan, pan was like a stock style, but the bracket was modified. So what we wanted to do was we measured our pickup to be about a three eighths off the bottom of the pan. That way it's not running too tight. So. Got cousin Paul over here grinding on some of these little shorty oil pan bolts. Like I was talking about, we put the we put this motor together with like extra spare parts, so we're kind of like salvaging from all over the shop to get this motor put back together. All right guys, we got, we got the uh, balancer on nice and tight. We got the oil pan on, uh, everything's ready to go. I wanted to show you this. Uh, we actually reused this uh, road race pan. One of the issues that we had with this, with this oil pan is the fact that my clutch cable, it used to be more squared off like this. We took this whole corner out because I run a T56 uh, Magnum bell housing. The, the clutch cable where the seven o'clock position was with the uh, bell housing on the T56, literally like you know, it was torquing the cable so the cable wasn't able to have a good clean throw to it so it'll now have uh, be able to transition around it we we had to cut that out that's why you see that so let me go ahead and flip this motor over we're going to re-lubricate a couple things uh cylinders make sure everything's clean we're going to uh, stick the heads on to kind of give an idea of what it's going to look like uh, this motor is pretty much ready as we got to go to the machine shop because you see we didn't fly cut the pistons on this and these are factory fox body pistons so, so we think that the uh, the, uh, the way the design is is not gonna have to, we're not gonna have to actually fly cut the pistons which is kind of cool and you know we're gonna test fit them on real quick just to kind of see what they look like put the dowel pins in and uh, that'll be pretty much all I got for you so we're just gonna clean our surface real quick and we are gonna stick one of the MLS gaskets on here. Set a couple of the ARP head studs in. I got my dowel pins in the block. And these are MLS gaskets, multi-layer, as you can see here. And these are for a 351. Again, we're just kind of setting them on here. We're not torquing anything down with the heads. I'm just kind of test fitting stuff. And one thing is good about the MLS gaskets and the 351 Windsors is the half inch head bolts. Definitely a lot stronger for boost and lifting heads or whatever. Just use one of the big ones and one of the small ones. Okay, so one thing is definitely gonna help me with the compression on this motor, because it's definitely gonna have some compression around like 11 and a half to one, is the fact that this is Kometic head gasket is actually 60 thou thick, 65 to be exact. You can see on the ARP head bolts, head studs, whatever, there's a coarse thread, which is the half inch that goes into the block. What really doing here is just bringing them in so I can set the cylinder head on top of it.
we're thinking that the uh, trick flow design on this engine, the way the, the valves are offset or inverted or whatever, will make it so we don't have to fly cut our pistons because the factory Fox body 302 forged pistons, the TRW ones are small valve reliefs, as you can see, they're like, I know they would still work on GT40 stuff, but anything above like a 184 would, would, would hit and you know would need to be fly cut. And I'm gonna do a whole video on us checking the piston to valve clearance just to make sure that our 387 isn't gonna touch the top of a piston when we start firing it up. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be one hell of a runner, guys, for sure. Last thing I wanted to mention is we had these uh, old used crane. I think these are crane rockers, um, 17s or 16s, I don't know. Um, we had a set laying around and we're gonna use them here on the, on the trick flow heads here. So I think that'll work out pretty well. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. 387 Ford Stroker here on the stand, put together with mostly junkyard parts and a cast steel crank. Once again, I appreciate everybody for watching the channel. If you're new to the channel and you just want to catch up, check out the playlist that we got going on, like I had mentioned earlier in the video. A lot of time lapses, I do apologize. If you guys enjoy the channel, leave me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Check out that join button below, become a member. You'll be able to get inside tips on some of this stuff that we're doing here on the channel. But outside of that, I just appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks.